Bart? Very good. How are you? Thank you. Uh, we haven't driven in a while. I, I can't I know, remember. I know. I kind of miss our driving time. I know. Me too. <laughs> I think that maybe, what was it? GLA maybe? No. Could be. GLA we had. and Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, maybe that was it. Yeah. Too long. Yeah, too long. And it, it, <laughs> a week is too long. Yeah, that's drive right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're making me feel good now. I mean, because, I mean, you guys are like putting out product like boom 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 like it's like non-stop i mean yeah. for you guys it's been like really really busy and it's gonna continue to be busy in the next few months right it's great job security yeah. and uh <laughs> you know what we really love it because we're passionate about cars and you know hey this is the these are the you know the, such golden years for us i mean it's the the future has been uh, you know always something you look forward to and now we're here we knew we were going to have a a really quick succession of new products and now we're in the midst of it and it's it's a lot of work but it's a lot of fun so what's your oldest car in the lineup right now well gosh you know you think the oldest car in the lineup well besides the, the g the, the easy answer is the g-class <laughs> yes you're exactly right that's, that's 40 what years I was, old. that's what i was going there and uh but uh the car rear end today is replacing the oldest car in the lineup that's the e-class uh so the outgoing car was launched uh I guess back in 2009, and uh, here we are with the uh, with the 10th generation E-Class. So well, that's perfect uh, segue to start yeah. talking about this incredible car because you call it the most intelligent car in the world, and there's like many reasons for that, right? Right. In and right. out. Yeah, in and out. It's so much uh, intelligence packed into one car. It really is impressive, um, and a lot of that has to do with the autonomous drive, or you could say semi-autonomous, or even autonomous driving features, and what we call intelligent drive. So intelligent drive is our suite of features which are really responsible for many of the safety systems, but also the comfort systems. And yeah. what we like to think about is safety and comfort really go hand in hand, uh, because a, a comfortable driver, or let's say a stressed, uh, or a, let's say a stress-free driver, makes better decisions behind the wheel. Yeah. So that includes, uh, obviously, I mean, the, co the actual comforts beginning with the seats. I mean, right. like we right. have, for example, now we have the yeah, the side bolsters, bolsters yeah, the side which bolsters are that amazing. With you. Yeah, those same bolsters and these same seats, uh, they're, most, they're the most advanced ones we have in the lineup, and they also have our multi-contour massaging. Uh, so they use 14 air chambers in the rear seat back and four chambers in the seat base. And they do. They use those, and, and you can choose from eight different massage programs, uh, which really give you a great feeling while you're driving, and keep you, let's say, relaxed but alert. Yeah. Uh, because that's the that's the idea. Because with a Mercedes car, uh, we feel like we've done our job. If you actually arrive at your destination feeling better than when you left. Yeah. And actually, this thing with, for people who never experience it, it's at the beginning. It's like. Okay, what's what's going what's on? What's happening? There? Yeah. But actually, when you're turning for especially in these twisty roads, I mean, yeah, sure. it, it, it's actually like a, a an extra element of information fed to your body. Yeah, yeah. Like, which way are you going? That way and, you, and, yeah, yeah. It's that. It's really that's a great way to look at it. It's feedback that you get about what the car is yeah. doing, and uh, that can always help you make better decisions. So uh, let's start talking about the amazing technology that is in this car and makes it the most intelligent one and hopefully we can cover all of it, which is a lot. Yeah, 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 I sure. mean, first, I mean, you already had the Distronic uh, right. bus system for years now mm -hmm. and that thing is pretty amazing. I think the latest generation we debuted with the S-Class two, yeah, two and yeah, a half years right. ago. That's exactly right. And so that latest generation uh, was when we're combining radar and cameras and the E-Class takes that a step further. We've got forward-facing and rearward-facing radar combined with stereo cameras, so that's two cameras which face forward, and now we also have radar which faces the side of the vehicle. So really a 360 degree picture is what we're able to pick to paint, and that way the car has a, a very good awareness for what's going on around it. And we really bring all those sensors together in a way which allows us to do a lot of amazing things in terms of making good judgments about, let's say, if the driver's not paying attention, uh, or if the driver becomes, let's say, drowsy, or if even the driver were to, gosh, where something were to happen and they couldn't respond to steering inputs, they, the car could come to a stop. So completely, a lot of wow. things, exactly. So with that Distronic and what we call Drive Pilot now, we're able to do things in it, and uh, just the semi-autonomous and even autonomous features of, if you, if you took your hands off the wheel, let's say, driving on the highway, the car would support you with steering and, uh, and, and be able to do that in a very comfortable way. So obviously it's not autonomous driving yet, but uh, in certain conditions, it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you can 
put a percentage of it, like yeah, 50, well, 60 percent. I mean, yeah, hey, you're one step closer, especially on highways. Yeah. Um, because those are the areas where uh, the car, you know, the car can see what's going on in front of it, to the side, and also behind, and really make some, you know, perfect judgments on on what your next move should be. Uh, one of those things, a new enhancement, obviously with higher speed ranges, you can you can use the Distronic. Uh, Drive pilot up to 130 miles per hour. It 130 can, it, miles an hour. 130 wow. miles per hour. You can use it in stop and go. Let's say if you're in a little bit of traffic on the interstate. And now, for the first time ever, we have our active lane change assist. So the car will execute a lane change autonomously just by you using the turn signal indicator. Okay, and that um, again with all these systems that are going towards the uh, autonomous driving system. You still have to have the hands on the wheel, right? Well, but the car will start do some of sure, steering. sure, and that's our recommendation because even today the best safety feature is you, the driver. Hopefully, and so you're, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that's right. <laughs> I trust you. We've driven a lot together. I know better. Uh, so that's really an important point to understand that you will be reminded if you take your hands off the wheel, you will be reminded to, to put your hands back on the wheel, and uh, because the driver is still in control of these features. And again, as you said, if I wouldn't. The car will sense that and eventually will will actually stop come completely. to a stop. Yes, okay. you'll get three sets of warnings. They're very clear warnings. You'll see them in the instrument cluster. Uh, Asks you to put your hands back on the wheel, and after that goes through three different uh, rotations. It would then begin to slow the car and would bring the car to a stop in its lane, and also put on the hazard signals just to alert those cars around you uh, that you had come to a Something. stop. Something okay, and that's one of the things that hopefully we'll never have to. Try exactly. And yeah. Well, you know, but there are many. There are many, yeah, right? No, you're right, Javier. There's there's so many features that we tell people we hope you never experience, but you but you're reassured that they're they're there for you if you need them. Um, the emergency stop assist that we mentioned is one of them. Uh, others are new features as part of our pre-safe system. Uh, we have our pre-safe sound. So pre-safe sound is actually a sound that is emitted out of the stereo speakers, which can basically almost like electronic earplugs. What they do is they trigger a muscle within your ear. It's called the stapedius muscle. It's the smallest muscle okay. in the human body. And it's inside your ear. And when it gets triggered by certain sounds, it actually closes off and keeps some of the damage, damaging sound waves from getting all the way to your eardrum, which could damage your eardrum. And so that's in a crash. You have airbags. You have the sound of metal on metal contact. Yeah. So just Glass, before, a yeah, yeah, all those things. So just before a possible impact, we emit a noise from the sound system, which really prepares your ears for a, for a, a possible collision so yeah that's one of them uh, the other is what we call pre-safe impulse side and that's a really interesting thing and it's a, it's something new that we're able to do now that we have radar looking from the side of the vehicle and with pre-safe impulse side the car senses that if you're traveling along and you're let's say you're crossing an intersection and a car begins to approach you from the side and it will it, sense that, that I'm sorry we will sense that through the cameras and radar it's actually and everything the cameras going, and the side facing okay. radar and one of the reasons we think this is so important just to backtrack a little bit is side impacts are the most deadliest crashes because the crumple yeah, you, zone you don't have too not, much a, space, not a lot yeah, not yeah. a lot between you and the and the uh, car coming so what this does is it actually will move you closer to the center line of the vehicle away from the potential impact it also does what we call pre-accelerate you because obviously when you have an impact it's that immediate acceleration of your body which does yeah, a lot of the damage impact, yeah. right and so this will pre-accelerate you and move you towards the center of the car and getting you away from that impact and what we've seen is in testing it reduces the impact energy on your body by 30 percent so that's that's a significant amount and that really means a lot in terms of reducing the amount of ener uh, energy into the body and reducing the potential for injury. Wow. So that really like can make a huge difference in case of an accident, which exactly. again, with all this technology, I have to say, you really have to do a lot of things wrong. Yeah, yeah. Or like or other people are around yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. But like, I mean, it's, it's almost, I think we can say it's almost dif more, very difficult to get into an accident in yeah, these cars you, now. Yeah, you'd hope so, but uh, there's so many cars on the road, yeah. it's the world we live in because we're only thinking there's probably going to be more traffic where we go, Yeah. and uh, the potential for, because there's more people, more cars, uh, the potential for something bad happening is something you have to be really ready for and aware of, and um, so that's what we like to build into the cars because again, 
With Mercedes-Benz, you want to feel great about what you're driving. Um, obviously, it's a luxury vehicle. We're asking you to, you know, this is not an inexpensive car. It's a, it's a great value, but that yeah. value proposition is driven by how great you feel driving it. Absolutely, and how much it, it gives you back with, with all that exactly technology. Exactly right, exactly yeah. right. So another of the things that, uh, that it, it has to be called intelligent, even the lights are intelligent enough to see what intensity they have to project. Right? right, right. It's something that we think it makes a lot of sense because it not only it doesn't just help the driver, it helps those behind you, but we've all probably been behind an LED equipped taillight car at night. They come to a stop and it feels like it's just a disco going on in yeah. front of you. And what we do with ours, because we have light sensors, we actually uh, have variable intensity tail lamps. That way they're plenty bright enough. They, they uh, indicate that you're on the brakes or turning. You see all that really well, but they're not so let's say harsh on those behind you um, and another thing that uh, it's uh, new in this car is actually what is up there the engine and uh, yes. four cylinder for this 300 version of it mm -hmm. and again when you hear four cylinder for an e-class some people say like what what yes they worry is that going to be enough <laughs> yeah. and uh, I think what we've been I think all you know, we were pleasantly surprised. We love the, the direction that we're able to go with a four-cylinder because it has great power, great sound, and great efficiency. And uh, that's really, it's, the, it's kind of the next stage where we see that uh, the four-cylinder is a great engine for this car. And for those customers, of course, who still want a six-cylinder engine, we'll have an E43 with 396 horsepower. So This is 241? 241 horsepower. Um, and then if you step up to the E43, which we'll launch later this year, maybe early next year, uh, you're close to 400 horsepower but going back to this one 241 horsepower and 271 273 pound oh, 273 and, which and is at a very uh, low RP, RP, RPM, RPM which yeah. is like really really you can feel it especially when you switch between the driving modes oh yeah with dynamic select if you move up to sport or sport plus you really feel it and you know a great way obviously we have a very wide torque band uh, the torque is the same as the outgoing six cylinder but that six cylinder only got to that torque level at 3500 rpm whereas this car gets to it already at 1300 so it makes a huge difference uh, in terms of the driving that combined with a nine speed transmission means you're always in the power band yeah and uh I understand also that this car is much lighter than the previous one yeah, which will help us obviously with efficiency yeah it helps with efficiency performance that plays a large role the car is 154 pounds lighter than the outgoing car and uh, you know every time we're able to do something like this the car gets larger uh, faster and leaner and uh, all things that I would like to do for myself <laughs> no, uh, but too. if I keep going on these press drives it's gonna be impossible <laughs> I, know. <laughs> uh, you know. I don't know how you do it <laughs> well, uh, I mean uh, you, you have to behave a lot. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. everything make, in moderation got it, so, including moderation <laughs> 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 I like that moderation in moderation yeah, exactly. right? so let's talk about where does the the reduction in weight comes from mainly uh, mainly uh, the substitution and the use of aluminum throughout the, the body of the car. So more and more of the parts that we're using are aluminum. Uh, so most of the, you know, it's the hood, the fenders, things that you see on the outside, largely aluminum. We've also substituted a number of parts uh, within the, let's say, the, the frame structure are now um, done in aluminum. And uh, so that obviously has a great weight savings over steel, uh, but offers at the same time, uh, we've increased the amount of high strength and ultra high strength steel because uh, we still know that a rigid safety structure is something that you have to have yeah. uh, for a car like this. It's uh, very interesting how the conversation about new cars more and more tend to go more to the technology side of mm -hmm. things. Yeah. But the design of this car in particular is oh, sure. something that has to be talked about. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great point. What we have in this car is what we call the widescreen cockpit. Uh, and the widescreen Huge. uses, yeah, right here, we use two 12.3 inch uh, high def displays, so it's almost like a widescreen TV that you could imagine. And with this, we're able to put out a lot of different information and, and give you just a great experience in the car. And it also gives us a lot of variability in terms of what we can do um, in really communicating what's going on inside the car. Um, but you get a beautiful display, obviously with navigation. You see this and, and it's, it's beautifully executed. And, um, and I think it makes it just a big impact and it's the expectation. The world we live in is, is really smartphones and I screens and, and all those things. And, and to have that laid out right in front of you with a flat panel design, uh, it's something that's becoming very familiar for people. So this huge thing, which is about what, 25 
Yeah, inches. probably about yeah, close to 30 inches. It's two 12.3s. So it's a one so piece. It's a one piece design. Wow. So that's one solid piece all the way around. And uh, and we love how it sets up within the cabin. It really is high tech. Feels like you're looking into the future. But also, uh, it, it combines really well with these very classic touches that you have yeah. here, like these lines, which uh, I'm I'm sure there's like very complicated process to make them. Yeah, this like is that. A, this is what our where our Dizinho flowing lines trim. And what we've done, we actually laser cut this and then inlay another color wood trim inside it. So it's really beautifully executed. And that's really what. I think our customers look for in terms of high tech. It's always a, comp a combination of high tech, contemporary design, but something still traditional, which makes Mercedes Benz. Real wood trims, leather, real metal finishes, all those things I think combine very nicely. It's, it's almost how you'd want to decorate your house something I contemporary, know. but also some nice, you know, antiques. I know if I had that technology to make this in a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd have it, right? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, also, I noticed this is new here in the, in the steering wheel. Yeah, the touchpad controls. Yeah. So that's something that's making its debut here in the uh, in the E class. And what we love about it, it's another control interface, and it's the way because you spend so much time interacting with the vehicle. And what's important for us is to be able to interact with the vehicle without causing a lot of distraction. And we feel like this is the best way because your hands are on the wheel; they're not moving down here. You're not gesturing. You're not because taking your hands off the wheel is a problem. Yeah. And we want to keep your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. And with this control interface, you can view everything on the right side is controlled with the right interface. So we're seeing it here, yeah. here, exactly. And then everything on the left side is controlled with the left interface. So you can swipe left, right, up, down, and then press to select. So that's the way. And, and, and the good thing is, this isn't a foreign concept. This is something we're no, used no, to we're doing. Already, yeah, we're, we're used to it from smartphones. Applications, uh, yeah. So it's great that we're able to bring technology in that is understood basically the second you see it, because you're, you're, this is a familiar feeling to you. So uh, let's try, I mean, we're not in a highway situation, which probably the, the Stronic Plus Pilot, what's the official name? Of oh, the, the Drive Pilot. The Driver Pilot will work, but like it's like in the other cars, you just set it up here, you set yeah. the distance from the car in front yeah. of us, which... And you're done. And I, by yeah. the way, we so have a beautiful Mercedes-Benz uh, GLC up there. Yeah, yeah, we have so, our, our GLC. So, for example, I go from closest to the longest distance so mm -hmm. it will give me more distance but it will still keep the same speed keep that same speed correct so you're what you're able to do is the minimum based on the, the interval that you can adjust it's about a two second interval yeah. and you can adjust that up to about three and a half to four seconds based on just how comfortable you are at your following distance and that way even here I mean I will still have to steer because especially this is a narrow yeah we're road. missing a lot of the lines on the road that yeah. we usually use for guidance at this speed but it will still keep your uh, your forward so it can still do the braking and the acceleration no problem um, even though again like we don't have a lot of the lines on the on both sides of the road at least mm -hmm. This one on the left is reading it, right? And I can actually sense it when, when I go over it. Yeah, the car yeah, starts like this, pushing. Yeah, ex you're exactly right. Just because we don't have them on both sides, as long as you have them in the middle, your lane keeping assistance still is, is there. So if you stray over the line, you'll get feedback in the steering wheel. And if you don't correct, the car will actually pull itself back into the center of the lane. So that's another feature with our, with our drive pilot. It actually uses braking on the opposite side of the vehicle. And when you brake the outside wheels, the car will pull itself back in the lane. Really amazing technology. And like, uh, it was very interesting on this particular trip because we started yesterday at your research and development oh, center yeah. here in yeah. uh, Silicon Valley. And that's where, I mean, I think you are a little bit to blame with the name magic on so many yeah. things. <laughs> because yeah. like the magic sky, magic uh, yeah, control magic and all vision, that. All these it's things. not magic. I yeah. mean, there's yeah. like a lot there's of work behind it. There's a lot of work it. behind it. So yes, magic happens after a hell of a lot of work. Yeah. And that's uh, that's how the magic happens. But we do a lot of the, the ma magical engineering, uh, a lot of that, the, the, especially the things that we're coming up with and uh, that get engineered for the USA happen at Mercedes-Benz Research and Development North America in Sunnyvale. California so I think it's great that we started there because if we're talking about the the most intelligent car on the road and and, uh, and such a masterpiece for us it really does make sense to, to start there uh, because so much of the technology and the things that we're doing today are what was developed there maybe just a couple of years ago and then furthermore what we'll be seeing on the road two three four years from now is happening right now Excellent. so this is a much better situation to 
again yeah, test drive of the systems. Yeah, sure. And again here with both lanes clearly painted on the on the yes. road, you can screen increase the speed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And again, this is not recommended, but you could actually just to try it. We'll see. We're getting to the line, and yeah, yeah there yeah. it is. It's pushing push it back you, to yeah, gonna push you back in the road. And you can even see it in the display when you yeah. see green on each side of the road. That means the car it's is a good it's reading. reading. Yeah, it's a good reading. Great. So you see that right away, and uh, pretty nice feature. Well, really a, an amazing experience, and uh, I guess I understand now why it's called the most intelligent car in the world because it really is. I mean, it's not just a name. And again, as we say, like there's the magic. I mean, the hard work of all your engineering. Yeah. And you guys yeah, know sure. that. I mean, it, it, it really is a car that almost thinks for you in yeah, some really, ways and yeah. reacts. And like, and again, as you said, we are still the, 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 the main safety feature in the car, I guess. Sure. But this helps a lot. Hey, Everything it's, that it's, is in here. Helps you know a lot. what? The way I look at it, Javier, it's like having a co-driver that you don't have to argue about the radio station. Oh, that's a good one. You know, <laughs> you think about that. It's the best co-driver you can have. They're quiet. They like the same temperature that you like, and they love your music. <laughs> yeah. And at some point, we'll get it to where it tells you how good-looking we are. Oh, that would be great. That, 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 how are you going to call next. that magic what? Yeah, magic. Uh, <laughs> let's see, just magic compliment control. Or something. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank bro. you very much. Let's do it again. Yeah.